Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Socialing the Distance. Our guest today is Christian Taylor, Olympic world champion in the trip yep. jump. My favorite field. I think it's on your, are you doing okay now? Yeah, I'm, I'm great. I'm great. Good, good. Well, you are right outside of Vienna, we understand now. Is that correct, Christian? Correct, correct. You're running the 100 meters tomorrow um, in Andorra. Oh, cool. So, very excited about that. So what kind of shape are you in for the 100? Yeah, I guess we will find out, right? Um, but I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping for, for um, a personal best, of course, and, and had a really nice session today. Um, oh, good. Yeah, and in the U.S., it was a bit difficult to get the consistent training and, and just to be in, in the right place to, you know, we didn't have a track access and, and things like this um, that I'm sure you, you've, you've heard, you know, many athletes speak about. Yeah. But now that I'm, I'm here in Austria for the last two weeks, I've, I've had track access and gym access. So, yeah, my fiance really set me up uh, perfectly to, oh, to be in a good state of mind and, and physically uh, going into tomorrow. I'm very excited. What is your fiance's name? Beate Schrott. And she's the hurdler, because I've seen her she compete is, a few she's times. she's the hurdler, yeah. correct, oh, correct. Oh, cool. Well, wow, you're very lucky. Congratulations again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so, you so much. For people who are stuck in the U.S., explain, the, what's it like in, uh, in Austria right now? Are, do people wear masks? Is there any yes. social distancing, or what's, how does it work? So the mask um, in grocery stores is enforced, and in, in the public transportation, buses, trams, all this, it's mandatory. Um, but uh -huh. I, I would say that life is very similar to how it was for us in the States, at least in Florida, um, around March. So people are mindful okay. and, and, and respectful that something is going on, uh, but they're also mm -hmm. still continuing to, to live their life in, in a safe manner. So um, I, I, from the number of cases, I, I don't even believe there were 800 deaths you know, through the entire um, period. And so it showed that yeah. they really uh, respected this and, and took the proper protocol um, from the beginning, shutting down the borders and, and making sure that um, things were in place um, to, to enforce this. But, you know, once um, everyone actually did shut down the restaurants and, and the businesses properly shut down, um, you know, and people were at home. My fiance was working, um, you know, lucky enough to get actually some training equipment that she could train at home, but was really lifting um, in the garage or, you know, uh, in the driveway, uh, but was really not able to have any access to facilities. So they really shut down completely. But by following this, they were able to keep the cases and keep the, the death count uh, very low. Um, and now they are able to slowly reopen, but obviously be mindful of, of the different protocols. Now, you're still working with Raina Ryder, is that correct? Correct, correct. So is Raina in Florida right now? Yes, he's in Florida. So, uh, I mean, I, I think I really was very lucky. We, we had a lot of uh, documentation to, to get me over here. But sure. at the same time, I think it was really wow. actually the grace of God that kind of um, slipped me in because yeah. you know, the first time I went to check in, they said that Americans, because of the, the EU ban, um, you know, the, yeah. the Americans were not allowed to come over. So, uh, yeah, again, wow. you know, I, I have to applaud and show grat gratitude to, to um, Bia because, you know, if it wasn't for her and, and, and the, the Austrian Federation, um, you know, putting working together to put the documents uh, that I, I don't think I would be here right now. Wow. Um, now, is this is the 100 your first competition for the year or how has it yes. gone so far? Yeah, so the year has been, um, yeah, uh, I guess based off of the circumstances, I, I would say I did the Zurich um, virtual meeting, yep, and yep. Uh, that was very different. This is my first time ever um, competing by myself, and, and that sure. was that was quite interesting to you know to compete with uh, Omar Craddock in California and Petrado over in Portugal. Um, yeah, you know, I also jumped in in Clermont several days before just to kind of see if, if I would even be able to, to do the Zurich meet. But um, all in all, I, I'd say, you know, based off of what we've had to deal with, I, I'm very pleased. You know, my, my goal was just to get over the 17 meter mark. And, and now my next, uh, my next triple jump competition will be in about three weeks, the Austrian uh, championships. I get to be an honorary guest. So I'm um, okay. very appreciative of this because, cool. as you know, the U.S. championships um, have been canceled this year. 
Yeah. First time in what, 143 yeah, years? Yeah, 100 something, something years. So. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Um, how was, when you were over in the States, how was your training affected by COVID? Were you able to train at all? Yeah, so, we, we, yeah, we did. I, um, Raina and, and Andy Burke. And so the, the team actually found many different ways that we could still um, stay fit. We were to, to train. We were using sometimes soccer fields, um, sometimes uh, warm-up tracks, sometimes uh, turf fields. Um, so it was really changing almost week to week as the the numbers sure. um but yeah I, we i work um but we we always mm -hmm. made the best of the situation okay now tomorrow at the meet that you're competing in will there be fans in the stands is there a limited number of fans or how does that work so uh, we received email i i don't believe there will be be any fans uh most of the time uh meetings over here now are just coaches and athletes um they're trying yeah. to keep obviously the the number of people that are that are present down um to to lower the risk sure. but I, I i i'm assuming that at the national championships that maybe there will be a limited number of fans but obviously spaced out um just to keep everyone safe okay now, let's talk about a couple other subjects dear to your heart. I want to talk about the Athletes' Union. And for American fans and coaches and young athletes, tell us what the organization is about. Yes, so um, uh, in November, there was the, the official decision of the four events being removed from the Diamond League, this being the catalyst and, and mm -hmm. really the last straw. Um, that's created the, the idea that the union or associated association needed to come about. And I reached out to my colleagues, uh, you know, athletes globally, um, to see if, if they would stand really alongside me and, and fight this fight with me and, and try to get a, a voice, but a, a for sure a greater influence in, in our sport. We've been identified as the major stakeholders yet. Um, we are also not given the respect that comes with that. And so um, from November to actually two weeks ago, you know, it was a lot of on the scenes, it was a lot of collaborations, um, Zoom calls, but it's really embodying the entire picture of well-being uh, for, for the individual, not just for the athlete, but for, for the individual. Um, but the ultimate goal, goal is to put the athletes in the position that they have influence to, to have a seat at the table. How is world athletics responded to the athletes union? Yeah. Um, but open arms because at the same time, what we are doing is actually changing the culture of the sport. Sure. Um, you know, because traditionally the agents are the ones that are speaking to the, to the governing bodies or the meeting directors, um, you know, and, and I, I would honestly say that the athletes are the last ones at the table. The athletes are the last ones to know. Um, yeah. and so this is going to be a culture shock and a culture change, but, um, I, I do believe that world athletics also respects, um, the idea that we are the sport and you cannot have Athletics, you cannot have track and field without the athletes. And so I, I, I'm hoping that they're going to be willing to make this an easy transition and that, um, again, they're going to be able to walk the walk. And, you know, they, they are the ones that have stated over and over again that we are the major stakeholders and, and they want the best for the athletes. So we're just saying, now, now show us that, you know, now do that. Hmm. How has... Um your major sponsor is Nike. Have you been able to have a discussion with them? With uh, absolutely, um, yeah. So with with the of course the discussions near and dear to my heart, Prefontaine Classic. Um, yeah. You know this this was as a Diamond League, and they were the only ones that were willing to actually put the triple jump in. Um, they also uh, initially said they wanted to do the two hundred, and yeah. I came I came uh, to Nike myself and and Eva Coburn. Um, and we're speaking to them about actually including all the disciplines that were removed. Um, and they said, sure. of course, this was going to be a challenge uh, financially, but also logistically. 
Uh, but you know, they'd be willing to do it because they, they understand this is, this is the spirit of sport. Um, but obviously with COVID, this was changed, um, because as, as we know that the, the meeting is, is no longer existing, um, this year due to COVID. But, um, I, I can say that, that Nike was very supportive, but also Prefontaine Classic, um, was very supportive and, and actually understood what we were trying to do. That's cool. That's cool. What um, do you? Wh- when do you think things will get back to a globally to a normal place? Do you think we're we're still looking into next year? I, I What's think your gut tell you. Yeah, my gut is telling me that it it will probably be about two years to get back yeah. to normal athletics. Um, yeah. Next year, I think it is going to be athletics and sports globally in the safest manner in the safest way possible. Yeah. But it will be about two sure. years to, to we return to the, the new normal. Um, I don't think we're ever going to go back to, to the way things yeah. were. And, and for me, one thing, especially to Americans, one thing I've expressed yeah. is this is the global, uh, instance of September 11th, you know, travel was never the same yeah. uh, in America after September 11th. This was, this was a shock and, and this was really a, a, obviously lives, lives, um, were lost. And, and, and I think this was really the, the moment when they said we're, we're never going to go back, um, to the way things were. And in the same respect, I, I believe this is, this is what will happen on all stages with business, with, with, with sports. Um, but absolutely, um, with the, the sport of track and field, I, I believe the new normal will take about two years. Can you travel around Europe now from meet to meet as a um, an American citizen? So I'm actually not going to take the chances with the flying because Austria has said that certain certain countries are actually flagged due to to their number of cases. Um, and so sure. if it is equal or greater um, to what Austria has, they said that it is automatic ten to fourteen day quarantine. Um, you know, wow. but again, this is also for EU citizens. And as I, I don't take it for granted that I'm here. I don't even want to push um, the envelope. And so now for the meetings this summer, I'm just going to be either sure. driving or taking the train. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, the, uh, the virtual meet that you hit were in a little earlier this season, um, I followed you around Europe in 15, 16, and 17. And some of my favorite stuff was watching a worked up you and Pedro get. And there was one time I know he came up and he kind of tapped you before a jump. And man, I just, it was like watching a boxing match. It was so <laughs> cool. Um, and you get really pumped up, you know. And, and, it, and that's the thing that's really fun about it. Um, the so how do you do it virtually how 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 are you able to do that that's got to be a challenge yes so for somebody like like myself the spirit that i have um as i'm very competitive i Mm -hmm. i really feed off of off of that yeah that testosterone you know that i i I feed off of the the back and forth I, i feed off of um, this this competition, and I believe this will actually be the greatest challenge over the next two years. Um, if you are not in yeah. the same place, if you do not have the bumping, the trash talking, the different elements that that myself, that that Omar Craddock, that that we use to kind of stir up Lee Van Sands. I mean, we we really get it rowdy down there, um, and this helps jump after jump after jump because it is a fight, it is a battle, um, and. And yeah, I, I do feed off this. And, and this was very difficult when, when I was um, in Florida competing against Pachardo in, in, in Portugal and in Omar um, in California. Sometimes we had a video delay. Sometimes we didn't get the, the results. Um, and then to be really honest, when you are jumping alone or competing alone, you can get very mental because there's almost there are no distractions you know, so some people do well with yeah. that complete tunnel vision and, and, and being able to 
to be in their zone. But for me, I feed off of, of my environment. I, I love to see Sam Kendrick's hit a big, uh, you know, pole vault and, and then to go and see Ryan Krauser, I mean, throw, you know, Ryan and, and Joe go back and forth in the shop. But for me, I feed off of the energy around the track, you know, and, um, to, sure. to be in a, in a track by yourself, you know, competing by yourself, not no claps. Um, it, it is very different. Why is it when you and Will Clay are together that you guys, I mean, it, it's just a feast to watch because you do a jump, then he throws him down, then you do a jump, throws him down. Is it because of your, the, all the time you guys have spent like competing against each other in college, now as professionals, um, do you guys trash talk with each other or you just keep it fun? How are yeah, you, so how I, do you? There's, there's definitely a lot of trash talk, but at the same time, because Will, Omar, um, you know, and myself, we, we've trained together for years, you know, and sure. so we know each other, I believe, better than anybody else on the field. And so we also know the little ticks, the little triggers that we can, sure. you know, that, that, that we can push, the little buttons that we can push to, to egg someone on and, and also to wake them up. Um, yeah. but uh, again, I, it's, it is, we, we've spoken about it year after year. It is a brotherhood, you know? So you always want to be yeah. the best and the strongest and the fastest brother. But at the same time, you also have love and respect for your brother. You know, you also want to see them succeed and you also want them to come out healthy and, and, and to get personal best. And, and so it, it is a very fine line. Um, but the thing is, I, I believe the reason we have these battles is because, we just know each other so well. And we know that until the last jump, it's not over. I'm going to give you five athletes' names, and you're allowed two words, three words to describe them, okay? Okay. Three tops, all right? Pedro Pichardo. Ooh, okay. Um, extremely bouncy. Okay. Will Clay. Um, Turn up. Okay. Teddy yep. Tomgo. Teddy Tomgo. Oh. Pushing the barriers. Okay. Omar Craddock. Texas Finest. Okay. Who, and then I'm going to, so I was thinking of a fifth athlete for you. Oh, Fabrizio Donato. Oh. Um. Oh my gosh. Cause every time I see him, I think, how are you still jumping? Yeah. It totally blows my mind. Yeah. Well, the, in, in Doha, was it Doha or was it London where you had the Portuguese gentleman, um, the triple jumper who had to be in his late. Days. Yes. Um, Nelson Avora. I, I love Nelson. Cause I've watched him since he was like a teenager. But you guys, you and Will paid him so much respect. Um, so how old can an elite triple jumper be? I mean, these guys have, have opened my eyes to it because I thought around 34, 35, it's, it's a wrap. But, I mean, yeah. they're going on 37, even 40, um, you know, and doing it at a very high level. But uh, Nelson, Nelson was the champion, in, in Olympic champion in Beijing 2008. You know, yeah, and so yeah. to, to see him medal in London, you know, 2017, I thought, this is incredible. What a career you've had and to still be at the top, um, you know, Donato to, to, to medal um, in London 2012, you know, so they're showing me that, you know, maybe it, it is really you're as old as you feel. Sebastian Coe said, this is back in the 90s when Kenny Moore was uh, asking him about Jonathan Edwards. And he said that the triple jump is probably the toughest event on the body of anything in track and field. How much time do you spend on core and um, strength work uh, percentage wise in your workouts? So to just get the body ready for the impact that we're going to take, I would say um, all the extra stuff besides running and, and actual jumping, I, I would say it takes up probably. Maybe I yeah I could honestly say probably about fifty percent of the training is is just general strength um, exercises. It is it is the fine 
muscles. So making sure the ankles are stable, making sure the knees, because again, it's, it's like a, it's like a chain, you know, and the weakest link will be the one that blows. So you have to ensure that every point is, is as strong and, and stable as possible. Okay. Um, you have a fondness for the 400 meters. Do you train for that? Or is it part of your overall, the overall training that Rainer gives you? So, um, to be honest, I, I've just had a 400 background my entire life. Um, you know, so I've always okay. been running 300s, always ran 350s. Um, so since my club days, I've just, I've always enjoyed being on four by fours and running 400s. So when I dabble in it, it is really just to continue the training that we're doing, um, already. Uh, Raina isn't so fond of, of the 300s and 350s, um, but it is, again, it's just kind of my background. It, uh, Mouse let me do it at Florida. And I, I think Raina allows me to do it because he knows it actually just makes me happy. It makes me happy to, to, to go and push myself and, and yeah. to be honest, to, to get a bit sick, you know, at the end of training, because I feel like I put in a hard day's work. And I also have this belief that my competitors are not training as hard as my, me. My competitors are not putting in the same, same work as I'm, uh, as I'm putting in. What is... Um What's your PB at 100 meters? Um, 10.6. Oh, good. Okay. Well, yeah. see, Jonathan Edwards was about, I think I got I him think at 10.4. 10 th- yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's so, do you think the leg speed um, corresponds to helping you in the jumps? To be honest, the most important thing for a jumper, and this is, I was actually speaking to Jonathan last week, um, the most important thing for a jumper is the flying speed. So, who could be the fastest roughly around the last 10 to 15 meters? So 100 meters, yes, is important. And you see how far Carl Lewis has jumped and, and of, uh, Dwight Phillips. So the sprinters, of, yeah, if you can do it right and put it together, you're going to jump very far. But the, the most important thing is, is having that rhythm and being able to ex- execute that on the runway. Um, because there's, there are a lot of um, sprinters. You can see Jerry and Lawson um, and go to Makusha that, have run nine seconds, but have jumped the eight twenties, eight thirties, but with the nine seconds, they should be yeah. jumping much, much further. It's, it's very different rhythm. It's a very sure. different movement. And so, um, I, I enjoy running because again, it's what we're doing in training. It's a nice way to mix it up. But at the end of the day, it is who can put it together and execute, um, the proper jump. And, and I think that is what makes a difference. Are you a championship jumper? Or a diamond league kind of jumper. Oh no, no, no! So for, for me, um, this is something Rain and I have really been seeing eye to eye um, since I would say since the very beginning. Um, and and sometimes we have to almost reel each other in, but we we have really decided that we're going to be championship performers. Um, and, and that is, that is the most important thing. Um, we can both yeah. have different times of, of different years that we say, Oh, you know what? Um, this person beat us last week. So maybe we need to go and make a statement, um, the following week, but then we have to, again, reach each other in and say, you know what, at the end of the day, people remember championships and this is what's been most important. And this is what we, we go back to. When you're in a championship situation, do you want to be? Jump early to establish your mental control, or do you want to just kind of take in and respond to everybody else? Yeah. Um, again, I, I like the, the competitive nature, so I, I love to respond. I love to chase. You know, and I think that ties back into that four by four mentality. Yeah. Um, it's scary to be up front and, and to be running thinking that somebody can catch you, but when you can see, um, you know, your target and, and set your, your sights on that and, and just go for that, I, that's for me is that's what I enjoy. I enjoy the chase, and so it's not that I plan to to steal on my fifth and sixth jump. Um, but for me, it is also very exciting to, you know, for the, for the crowd, but exciting for me to, to be able to, to chase something. When, um, when you're going down the runway, do you, does time stand still or does it all go very fast for you? It definitely stands still. So when I'm preparing for the, for the meet, then, um, it actually goes very quickly, but as soon as. I get onto the runway, everything gets very quiet, everything slows down, and I'm really able to get into my zone. 
Do you get nervous before big jumps? I, to be honest, I, I really can't say it's nerves. I, I was very nervous when I was running the 400 um, yeah. because I just always felt like the underdog and always felt like I was the man that had to chase. But in the jumps, I'm, I'm very confident with the training that we put in. And, and um, I, yeah, of course, now I've, I've gotten a lot of experience under my belt. So with the jumps, I, I'm more confident than, than nervous. What is uh, jumping with Pedro bring out of you? Because I've watched you guys go at it. Um, and it's, it's, I remember it was on, I think it was 15. There was that whole series of meets where you guys were doing 18s. And it was right. just like, wow. And, and you know, I, it, it, I just wanted to watch. It was just the most entertaining thing. And, and I, couldn't miss a jump because I know what you guys were doing, you know? And it, that's the thing about the triple jump is that it's like watching a, an opera, you know? There's build up and stuff, and then there's this. Right. And, and when you have really good competitors, you bring it out of each. I mean, it's like what David Bedford used to try to do at the London Marathon. He didn't get the fastest guys, he guys that shut their off and kind of. Grew, you know, drew something out of each other. That's what a great competition is. Um, if you were talking to a group of riders and you're trying to educate them about the triple jump, what do we do wrong about riding about the triple jump? I would say the, the thing that is always um, maybe understated is, is the importance of the runway. There's so much talk about someone's hop or their step, but the runway consistency and obviously yeah. the speed on the runway, I, I would say th there's, there's a lack of focus on the importance of the runway because it doesn't matter how fast or how strong or how good a jump you are. If you are fouling, it means nothing, you know, and, and a lot of the most talented athletes in the world miss medals and miss finals because they just don't execute. They don't, Cons run consistently on the on the runway and have this dialed in so when the pressure is on um when the adrenaline is pumping then they are still able to to put it together so i would say if if there was a greater emphasis on on just how consistent you know when when you look at the records and see who who is fouling when the pressure is on you know um for me this is this is very important as opposed to who's just a really good jumper Um, do your folks get to still come to a lot of your events? Yeah. Before, before, um, COVID? pandemic times, yeah, they yeah, were, yeah. yeah. Um, they were at every championship. Absolutely. And, and my dad travels quite a bit. So, um, from Florida relays to, yeah, to any meet, uh, globally, he, he would come over. Yeah. I loved meeting them in 2012 in Eugene. That was a lot of fun. They were very sweet. Um, the, um, if you had a group of young kids um, who are kind of getting into the triple jump, what would you tell them is the biggest thing to learn about the triple jump? Or is there something they need to accept about the triple jump um, to be good at to it? To be really honest, if I was speaking to a, a group of young kids, I would just tell them not to stress it. You know, I think that is one okay. thing that is playing into my advantage, uh, especially when I, when I travel overseas and I see the young kids, kids really um I, you know i i believe that when they get older they get this burnt out feeling because they've been doing it hardcore for for so many years and the unique thing that that we have especially in the u.s is that you know the, the typical all-american uh, kid is doing multiple sports you know every season they're doing something and so i would just tell a young kid to just have fun don't don't sweat the small things um you know if you can make it to the pit be happy with that because, you know, most of us will start and land on the runway a few times. So, you know, just, just enjoy the, the little wins, the little victories and, and really don't take it too serious. I, I really get um, a lot of Instagram and Twitter uh, requests on, on how they can perfect this and, and how, how they can improve to, to get to 13 meters and 14. And I think you're so young don't, don't rush it, you know, just continue having fun, continue growing. Um, but, but really just don't overthink it. Don't, don't try to be too old, too quick or, or professional, you know, too soon. Just enjoy the process. Are you a sprinter who jumps or a jumper who sprints? 
Mm, I would have to say until my times go down in the hundred, I am a jumper that's that, that sprints. Um, okay. You know, so hopefully tomorrow this changes, but for somebody like uh, Tiana Bartoletta, mm. you know, I, I believe she is a sprinter that jumps. Yeah. She, we, I interviewed her earlier in the week and uh, Tiana had said that when her speed is really there, her jumping is just boom, 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 you know, and correct. That makes, I, I, would, I would be the first one to let you know that when she came back to jumping, I told her she had no chance. I couldn't believe it. It was horrible. I told her to say really on the sprints because I, di I didn't know what she was doing. Um, and then she came out and, and became Olympic gold medalist, you know, so that shut me up. But, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> it shows you the importance of speed. Sure, sure. All right, we're down to our last five minutes. Um, okay. So I got a few other questions for you. Is there a historical jumper that you have total respect for? Mike Conley. Okay. Um, it's someone that I, I believe we have very similar jumping styles. So from the very beginning, um, you know, uh, obviously he has the medals to prove it in, in his career, but I've just always thought that if I was going to be like somebody, I would like to, to be like Mike, you know, and I think that works out in many different ways, you know, um, Michael Jordan, Mike Conley, but, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Mike Conley is somebody I've, yeah. I've really always looked up to and, and, um, I just have really a lot of respect for him. In the late eighties, I interviewed, uh, um, uh, um, Mike, Michael, uh, Jordan and, uh, I did it for Nike and he knew I was a track coach and he looked at me and he said, okay, what event would you have me do? And I looked at him, I said, your vertical leap. I said, I knew you long jumped a bit. I said, but I'd like to have you do the triple jump. And he looks at me and he goes, why? I said, give me six weeks. I'll get you to 55 <laughs> feet. And I said, you got, you got, I mean, cause you know, his back was so strong and stuff like that. And those are the things that I looked for, you know? Right. Um, right. If you were taking a kid that was a, a talented basketball player, a talented volleyball player, do you think you could convert them to being a triple jumper? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, um, yeah, Donald Thomas has, has showed us that you can yeah. for sure make that, that transition, um, you know, to the high jump. Yeah, I think it's unbelievable to, to see his career. I mean, starting out going to meets with, with basketball shoes. Yes. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, so I, I never want to forget that. And I always bring that up to him. Like, you know, I'm, I'm such a big fan of his also. But uh, I, I definitely believe that um, if people are patient, I, I would love to show anybody how to triple jump. I, I really love it and, and would love to, to pass that on. What do you think is the – is there a distance that you would be surprised to see in your lifetime in the triple jump? Uh, I would, I would say 61 feet, um, okay. because then we would have to question if the runway is long enough anymore. Um, Jonathan okay. Edwards um, at 60 okay. feet, uh, was okay. really pushing it. I've seen Teddy Tomgo, um, jump 12, I would say 1260 maybe, but it could be, could be a little less, maybe 1240, um, for the hop step in, in our triple jump board is 13 meters. So I, um, I was in Gothenburg in 95 and I watched Jonathan Edwards as my first world record right. that I got to see in one place. The thing that I recall is he was kind of in this Zen zone. You know, there was, it, he was smiling. It looked like he was in no pain. Does every athlete get a Jonathan Edwards moment in their careers? I, I believe so. I believe sometimes the stars align and, and you just feel it, you know, you yeah. just, I, I've been in, in Prefontaine. Uh, I've, I've been in Eugene's some days and I, you know, I, she was my girlfriend at the time, but now my fiance, you know, I've called her and been like, you know, she's, she had a good day and it just felt like, you know, she was in Europe, she ran well. And I just thought today is just going to be a good day. You know, it, you just feel it. Breakfast is good. Coffee is sweeter. Like the birds are, are, are singing, you know, and, and I, I jumped 18, 11 this day. And, and I, I was very happy, but also very disappointed because I thought that would have been the day to do it. You know, home soil, rock and crowd, um, 
she did really well. I wanted to do really well, you know? And so sometimes it just lines up. Sometimes you just like baseball or, or golf, hit that sweet spot and it's almost effortless. Christian Taylor, thank you very much. We've done this almost perfectly. We're down to 40 seconds. Travel safe, my friend. Good luck in the 100 meters tomorrow. Uh, thank you so much. And thanks for your time. And I hope to see you at a meet soon where we can uh, say hi to each other in person. But uh, this is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. We've had socialing the distance with Christian Taylor. And he's in Austria. And Christian, travel safe, my friend. Thank you so much, Larry. Good to see you. Stay safe. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Bye now. Thanks. Bye. Well, hello, sport fans. Greetings and salutations from San Jose, California. This is Larry Eater. We're doing Socialing the Distance, and today we featured Christian Taylor. You know Christian, number two, triple jumper of all times, 18.21 meters, 59 feet, eight and three quarters, baby. All right? Christian's awesome. But we also had a first day, too, because I'm sitting in San Jose, and while we've recorded with Stuart Wire for the last 11 weeks in Oxford, England, Christian was in a moving vehicle going across Austria. Yes, Austria, where the name Eater is like Smith, according to some of my friends. So anyway, I digress, but what do you expect with me? Okay, so um, Christian was wonderful. And, and um, how do I describe Christian Taylor? Probably one of the most competitive people I've ever met on the track and one of just the nicest people off the track. And, you know, the truth is in 45, 46 years in the sport, I think there's one, only one complete asshole I ever met, and that was back in high school in the sport. So for the most part, people are pretty darn good. Even people you'd kind of expect to be difficult – Christian's never been difficult. He's a lot of fun. He's always open to the press. We talked today about the Athletes Union, a new group he's been working on for a while, but really got into it in November when the Diamond League did the kibosh on uh, four uh, iconic events in the sport, which annoyed me too. And under the guise of, well, we got to modernize things. Well, you do. But uh, truth is, just go out and sell some more sponsors. And talk about the sport, talk about the excitement of the sport. Um, so anyway, um, Christian and I talked about uh, the nature of the triple jump. I gave him five athletes' names, uh, Omar Craddock, uh, Fabrizio Donato, uh, Will Clay, Pedro Pichardo, Teddy Tom, and he allowed him three words to describe those five athletes. It's something we're doing with everybody, and it's kind of fun. Um, he was with Raina, uh, Rainer, his coach, uh, in the U.S. until just a few weeks ago. And his uh, lovely fiancée, Erdler, in Austria, was able to get him into Austria. Um, so he's one of the few Americans over there right now because Americans really aren't welcomed in the EU right now. You've got to do a 14-day quarantine. And he's going for me to meet tomorrow. He's got 100 meters. That's where he was driving to this evening. And he had to get done before too late because he – Wanted to get some sustenance. And yes, they actually closed places in Austria. Um, I love traveling in Austria. I've been to some meets there and it's a lot of fun. The food's good and great places to walk at 11 o'clock at night, you know. And, uh, but again, a digression. Uh, so, Christian, um, Christian is a jumper who sprints. Uh, he says until he gets that 100 meters down below 10.6. Jonathan Edwards ran about 10.4, I think 10.34 to be exact. Um, but, um, uh, and I asked Christian if he ever had a Jonathan Edwards moment, and he says most athletes do. And uh, he's also inspired by Donat, Fabrizio Donato and Nelson Vora that maybe he can compete for a, a much longer time, you know, into the late 30s, early 40s, like Fabrizio. So we hope to keep... Uh, Christian around for a long time. He's a lot of fun. He's a great interview. Please make sure you watch the whole interview. Um, what was interesting also to me was that in Austria, people take COVID seriously. You're in stores, you wear a mask, six-week separation. 
um, but people are pretty respectful. Uh, and it, it sounds like that's the way it is in much of Europe right now. Uh, it has its, they've had their problems over there too, Sweden. While you can admire them for giving it a shot, uh, they, they perhaps made uh, a, an error in the way that they handled COVID. Uh, in the U.S., we have no room to talk because it's different from state to state and from municipality to municipality. I'm in Santa Clara County in California, and I see most people wearing masks and keeping distance and being careful. But there's people who are not, and we had our highest uh, number eight yesterday of any time since COVID began. So it's a little scary. So stay safe, isolate, wear your mask, work out, watch these videos, pass them around. The way we get paid is when people watch these videos and they read our stories, advertisers get happy. So buy products from Brooks, buy products from Nike and New Balance and Boca and Adidas. Um, they have all been sponsors for the last several years with us, but Brooks has really stepped it up, as has Nike. So uh, please support the brands and support the sport. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is the epilogue for Christian Taylor signing off. Have a great weekend.